Hey there guys, today's gonna to be the first part of what I'm thinking is gonna be a several part series on the various aspects and components of rainwater harvesting. As many of you know, I live in the Arizona desert off of almost 100% rainwater, so it is a big portion of my life. Uh, so today I'm going to start from the top down and I'm going to talk about the various types of collection surfaces that you can catch rainwater off of. I'll start with rooftops since that's probably the most common thing and then I will get into some alternative options and things I've been thinking about. The first roof I'm going to talk about is composite shingle. This is probably the most common roof used out there because it's pretty affordable, easy to install, and pretty durable per the price. Each shingle is composed of an asphalt mixture with a reinforcing fiber such as fiberglass and usually some sort of mineral topper to give UV protection. I think this roof provides a decent runoff surface for general utility uses in landscape, but probably not for garden or potable use. The next roof I'm going to talk about is a built-up flat roof. This is a pretty common roof in the southwestern U.S. or other arid regions, as well as some commercial buildings. It's essentially just a flat roof where the water drains from the side via scuppers, and it is composed of a roof decking with layers of waterproofing uh, surfaces such as felt paper, tar, and usually finished with some sort of rubber membrane or an elastomeric surface to give the final waterproofing. I think this can be a decent surface for most water uses, utility, uh, landscape, and some garden uses, but probably not for potable water just because of the risk of the water being in contact with some sort of tar or other layer that may be under the elastomeric membrane. Next on the list is a corrugated asphalt panel. I've used this type of roofing on my shop and my daughter's playhouse and it is pretty darn easy to work with. It's essentially comprised of a formed corrugated panel out of asphalt, a reinforcing fiber, and then topped with a painted or coated surface. I think this type of roofing is great for a wide variety of uses, landscape, trees, utility uses, and gardening, but I would not use it for potable purposes just because of the asphalt component in the making of the panels. Assuming the top is not broken, uh, the water really isn't coming in contact with the asphalt, but in case it was abrased or broken, you could have some exposure there. Next up is tile. This is another really common roofing surface in my area as well as a lot of coastal regions around the world. It's extremely durable and long lasting and essentially is just a grid work of overlapping tiles to create an impervious surface on a roof. I think this can make a really great surface to collect water off of, assuming there was no toxic compounds used in the making of the tiles. I would use this for general use, gardening, trees, landscape, as well as potable uses, assuming again there was no toxic compounds used in the manufacturing of them. Next up is metal. This is probably the single most common surface that most people think of when they think of water harvesting. It's what I use on my own home and I have a lot of faith in it. It's usually comprised of some sort of stamped sheet metal, either standing seam or corrugated like I have on my roof, and some sort of galvanizing process or a paint coating uh, to protect it from the elements. Metal is extremely durable, it's easy to keep clean, and I personally use this for every water use, including cooking and drinking water. The only areas where I would consider otherwise is if it was an unknown process of galvanizing or an older process that could have used some sort of uh, heavy metal like lead or something else that uh, could be toxic. And here's just some examples of some really old 50-year-old metal roofs that are still uh, going strong. And the last is polycarbonate or vinyl. This is commonly used on patios, porches, sunrooms, and greenhouses. This is my personal greenhouse, and I would use this water for virtually any use, including potable. Specifically, this water goes down to my garden area, and it's used on my vegetables and other garden plants.
Okay, the last two types of roofs on my list are the wood shingles and the natural roofs. I didn't really have anything good nearby to give you some good video clips, so I'm just going to give you my opinions off the top of my head. As far as wood shingles go, assuming you live in an environment that's pretty moist and you don't have that much fire danger, I think they're probably fine to collect water off of, just so long as they are not treated with some harsh fire retardant. And then for the natural roofs, that's going to be pretty much any roof that you are growing something on top of, whether it's grass or some other type of plant matter um, in a soil base or an aggregate base um, and you could probably collect water from the seepage from that but I really don't think those roofs are intended to collect a ton of rainwater because obviously <laughs> a lot of those plants in the soil or whatever they're using is going to absorb a lot of that water. I would say just make sure you have a really robust uh, truss system because that's probably going to be a lot of weight. Okay, so that's it for the roofs. That's probably the most common surface that most people think about when they think about rainwater collection. But there are alternatives, a couple of which you have seen here before in my rainwater tarp project and my rainwater garden project where I collect the runoff water off my road. And there are a couple of others, so let's look at some of those now. The first of my alternative collection surfaces is my rainwater tarp project where I use a billboard tarp to collect and divert water down to an IBC tote for later use on garden plants. I would use this water for virtually anything except for drinking or cooking water just because of the dyes and other chemicals that could be on the tarp. If you want to see more on this project, I will post a link in the upper portion of the screen on the two videos I did on this about a year and a half ago. Next up is simply using a temporary tarp set up off of a porch or garage. Um, in this case, I'm using my truck and diverting it into a simple blue barrel. Um, this is something I actually want to try to develop further to uh, uh, basically extend one's roof space to collect more water. I think this would be a great option for a tiny house or a camp trailer or something like that. But anyway, stay tuned. I may develop this one further. And the simplest and probably the cheapest of all the collection surfaces is simply just using some compacted ground. In this case, this is my rainwater garden where I am diverting water off of my dirt driveway to a bermed up area that you'll see here. The berms are the rocked up areas. And basically diverting the water into some little catchment ponds that I made. And this is an example of what it looks like when it's raining. And the last example is something I'm actually thinking of developing further, much like the uh, temporary tarp, but basically using some sort of concrete pad or paved area that you're using for a utility purpose, but putting a gutter or a trench along one side and diverting it down to a barrel or something buried in the ground. I just have a lid here to show you how the barrel would go. There's not actually a barrel uh, underneath that lid. Okay, so that is pretty much it, as I like to say. I hope this was a good overview of the various types of collection surfaces that you can collect water off of, although they do have their pros and cons as far as the ultimate usages that you can get out of them, whether you can consume the water or just use it for various other things. But pretty much any surface is going to provide you a, an ability to collect water for at least some usage. And by the way, a, a lot of the things I mention in here, these are just my personal opinions. I'm not a scientist or an expert on any uh, matter. If you do choose to collect rainwater, especially if you're choosing to consume it by drinking it or cooking with it, uh, you do so at your own risk. Make sure you filter, collect off of um, good surfaces, clean surfaces, um, but uh, that is a choice that you have to make. I obviously do it all the time, uh, but I just also want to cover 
my own butt <laughs> just from the crazies out there. But anyway, this was just one component of a rainwater harvesting system. In the future, I'm hoping to cover everything from the gutters to the transportation pipes to the storage tanks, the filtration, and the ultimate final usage. Um, so hopefully this was interesting to you guys. Um, if you have any questions, post them down below. And uh, as always, check me out on Instagram, and uh, we will see you next time.